We are pushing with every new machine development the boundaries further. For instance, with the 9150, we achieve now a bucket size of 9.6 cubic meters, which brings this machine closely to the performance of a 200-ton excavator. And this at the same time without any further additional fuel consumption. In our alternative areas, for instance, on the bucket developments, we have designed the evolution generation of our buckets, which is increasing the payload to weight ratio, and at the same time, the structural life of each bucket. So every new development, we are focusing to bring the technology further. We have a very complete range of excavators, uh, maybe the most complete range of any OEM in the industry. In the 100 ton class, we have two models. We have the 9100 and the 9150. The 9150, without a doubt, has created its own class and we now see other OEMs following this idea. In the mid-size class, we have uh, three different models and at the upper end, we have uh, three ultra-class machines with the 995, the 996 and the 9800 all very successful in the resource industry. For trucks, uh, we have uh, started historically with the larger trucks. Uh, we have uh, today the 240 ton truck and we have the 360 uh, ton truck. And uh, as you may know, we have already presented the prototype of our 100 ton truck uh, on the last Mine Expo. And this is an upgraded version of the original truck after we have collected a lot of experience in the field with that model. Um, in between the 100 ton truck and the uh, 240 uh, ton class truck, uh, there's still a bit of work to do, but uh, without really revealing too much, I can say that we are working on it. Um, we are not in a rush, but uh, we are working on it uh, and we will do the work step by step. Well, as this is a very competitive market, we do not do machine development in a rush. What I'm saying is that, that we are taking good time in order to investigate the market, to see what is available on the market today. But we also uh, try to have a good understanding of what the future uh, will bring, what technology most probably will be available in the future. The reason for doing that is that we wish to offer to our customers uh, not just the machine which is competitive at the moment of time when he purchases the machine, we also want to make sure that that model remains competitive over its lifetime. The best answer to that is, is probably it depends. Uh, in my opinion, it depends on, on, on three different factors. Uh, first, it depends on the size class of the machine. Second, it depends on the maturity of the uh, market in the region. And third, it depends on the customer. If it comes to the size class of the machine, it's our experience that we see a much more uh, capital-focused approach in the 100 ton class, in the smaller machines, and that's the valid for trucks and for excavators. And if the machine gets bigger, usually there is a much more TCO uh, um, focused approach. If it comes to the maturity of the mining market in the region, uh, our experience is actually that in the emerging markets there is a very strong capital approach uh, to, to, to make a choice or selection of a machine. However, for the more mature mining markets where they know their cost drivers better, where they have tools in place to record everything that, that actually the machine delivers and all the costs related to what the machine delivers, in those markets, there is more this TCO approach. And as I said, third point is the customer. Um, what we see also is that some uh, smaller uh, companies, uh, some junior companies, they usually have uh, more capital uh, uh, price uh, approach and the larger mining houses, the contractors uh, uh, as well, they usually, they, they really identify the cost drivers in much more detail. They run the machine very efficiently 
Um, they, they record the uptime, they record the utilization, all those things. And with all that data, they of course um, run some, some very detailed uh, TCO analysis and that's why their approach is much more TCO focused. In the last year we have constantly worked on reducing the costs in our machines. This is extremely important to meet the today's requirements on the capital expenditures of mining customers. We are also working on our components in order to push the boundaries and the, the expected lifetime of these components further, which is bringing us ahead in terms of the total owning and operating costs of a machine. But not only that, with our technology we are providing today, we can, for instance, on the T236 with the electrical drive, allow the mines to adapt the ramp angle specifically to their operation. This is a significant advantage because this way mining operations are capable to move potentially less dirt for the same amount of production. Well, there were always those questions about reliability, productivity and safety. But in the recent years we see more and more questions coming up that ask about new technology. We have developed uh, a good understanding for what the questions are, but uh, in order to do the job correctly and to develop the right machine, you have to understand why are the customers asking those questions. And I believe I can say that over more than 45 years of experience in the mining industry, we also have developed a very good understanding why the customers are asking those questions. And as I say, if you want to understand why they're asking those questions, you have to understand their business. And um, for sure, it's true that it also depends very much who you talk to. The business somehow is a bit different for the different people on site. So it's important who is asking the question because all these people have different things that matter for them. Talk to the mine manager is a bit different than talk to uh, probably the plant manager. Talk to the uh, purchasing manager is probably a bit different than talking to the executive management in the headquarter. So I believe uh, that Libre has really developed a very good understanding of uh, all the responses of all the things that are important to these people and uh, I believe you can see it in the development of our machine because our machine at the end of the day is the response to all these questions. In the past our customers asked us a lot about productivity of the individual machines. Uh, this is now uh, moving away towards more utilization of the equipment and also in a direction to uh, give more support to operators, um, service personnel in order to assist better in the general operation with that kind of machine. So this is a technology we are currently focusing on on development, is to enhancing on that side the utilization of our very performant equipment. So soon, very soon, we will see in the market uh, things coming up which are actually addressing that aspect. Beside that, um, zero emission is a subject. Um, zero emission is not only about burning less fuel today. It will be a discussion in the future, where do we go with the greenhouse gas emissions and where do we are capable to bring our machines to a long-term future sustainable environment. The vertical integration of our components and system is still a major initiative for us. In the 100 ton excavator class, we have achieved now the successful target lifetime of the 9512 Leaper diesel engine. And the machine is performing now excellent with this engine solution. We are now in the process of integrating the tier 4 or Euro 5 version of that engine, and we will send this engine very soon out for the first field trials. On the large engine side, we have integrated the 90. 812 engine into a R9400 excavator. We are in the process now of releasing the first unit into a real production environment and prove the full concept that way. The driver in electrification of trucks is not only the increased performance, it is also to get the energy costs for a mine side down and to reduce the overall emissions. 
we are expecting of the future that we will see increased fuel costs and also additional tax burdens on fuel. And last but not least, of course, it is all about reducing our greenhouse gas emissions um, also out of mining. We see in the electrification of the machines a significant technology step ahead to achieve that target. So today already with our electrified excavators, we are able to actually say in case the energy comes out of a sustainable source that we are offering a zero emission machine. With the trolley solutions, we are able to reduce also the emission significantly per truck. So we can already state today, if we want to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions by a large extent, we are already today there and we are here to support it. In our automation vision, we are supporting the open interchangeable between different kinds of machines. So our mission is that we are developing trucks and automation systems where you can connect your truck in any kind of fleet management system. So we want to have our customers, give the customers the opportunity to choose the fleet management system and we are then able to connect to that system with our equipment. Also, what we want to offer is a flexible autonomous solution, which means that we are offering a truck ready for automation and even the integration of this truck into a fleet, an existing fleet management system could be that way possible. Our development focus um, on autonomous products is to deliver a system which has a very high level of autonomous thinking on the machine. We intend to reduce the dependency further from a centralized kind of system and allowing, for instance, a machine to drive around an object, object on the whole road by its own decision. With this solution, we intend to give the machine more autonomy and more freedom and allow a better operational continuity. We intend to have the first tests trials running in beginning of 2020. The integration work for serial delivery of an autonomous ultra-class haul truck will be finished in the next 18 to 20 months. So we are expecting then to have the first truck fully available to in incorporate and to be connected to also third-party fleet management or traffic systems. We are looking forward to that time. Yes, there is a long list of arguments that really count for Liber. We do offer products which are uh, known as high quality products uh, that uh, always perform, perform even under the harshest conditions. Um, we, did, we do develop our own components and, and so if ever a modification is required, we have the destiny in, in our own hand. We do run a Liber service organization in most parts of the world in our mining business, that means that our customers can talk directly to LIPAIR people and if ever there is something which needs to be raised uh, to higher levels, these LIPAIR people have a direct access to the factories, to the engineers, to the management in the factories. And that's also what we want uh, from customers. We invite customers uh, to come and talk to us. We are very approachable, we are very transparent and, and, and so actually if a customer wants to make proposals uh, or, or wants to voice any concern, Actually, um, we give him uh, the room to do so. We give him the opportunity actually to raise it uh, to the right people. Uh, last but not least, I should say that we are independent. Um, actually, we, we, we can build on long strategies and, and that allows us really to, to build on very sustainable and, and long-lasting customer relationships.